What is going on everybody? In this tutorial, right now I am going to show you how to build a custom context menu or a right click menu inside of React or Next.js. And I'm gonna be building this whole thing out in TypeScript. So if you're following along in JavaScript, even better, you'll have an even easier time following along. And if you're following along in TypeScript, then you won't have any problem getting the correct types because I will be giving them to you. Similar tutorials take a long time to explain this, but it's such a simple concept. I can explain it to you in a couple of minutes and you'll have a perfect custom context menu. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in the application and I'm going to be showing you this custom context menu in a real world scenario, not just in an empty Git repo. So you can actually see what it looks like in a real world application. This is the one, this the startup we are building together on this YouTube channel at the moment. So right now what happens when you press right click, not much, just the default behavior. It is on German, but it's just the basic Chrome or Firefox or whatever menu and we don't want that. So what do we do? Let's go into VS Code and you can literally do this on anything you want, like a div, a span, it does not matter. I'm going to be doing this on a custom component called editable, which is essentially just the same thing as a div. And these all get a method called on context menu, which is gonna be really helpful. So let's receive the event uh, as the first parameter, which is going to be a mouse event. And then we will handle that event. So let's call that handle context menu. And we're going to pass this function, this event. So let's copy the type and if you're following along in plain JavaScript then you do not even need to worry about the types. You can just um, handle the context menu like this and the type will be passed automatically which is really handy. I think it will even be passed in TypeScript. Let's check that out. Um, we will create a custom function called handle context menu and it will actually get passed um, just like this. That is very nice. So on the div, on the span, wherever, we're gonna put this custom function and with the function, uh, we're gonna need the parameters. So every time we click the component, we put this method called on custom context menu on. Every time that will be clicked, this function right here will be called. And the first thing we're gonna do to prevent the default menu to open up is e.preventDefault. And I'm using GitHub Copilot here because it's a bit easier. And what that is going to do for us, it's, as the name says, just going to prevent the default behavior. So right now I'm right clicking, nothing is happening. The default menu is not opening. In the next step, we're going to take two parameters from the event. And we're going to need those in order to render out the position of the custom context menu. Those parameters are going to be page X and page Y. And those are going to be really helpful when rendering out the component. To actually do that though, we need to save them in state so the UI updates when these properties update. So let's create a state for that. And don't worry about these other states, they don't really uh, matter. We're just gonna use state and let's call it context menu. And this state I'm not gonna put right here, I'm rather gonna create a custom object called initial context menu. And the reason for that is it will make resetting this um, state later way easier. So this initial context menu is going to be equal to three properties. And those properties are going to be show, which is going to be false by default. So that means, are we actually showing this custom context menu right now? Is it visible to the user? Then we're going to have the X coordinate as GitHub Copilot already suggested and the Y coordinate, and that is all we need. So with that state all ready to go, we can actually set the state right here, and we're going to set it as show true, because, well, when this function runs, the user wants to show the menu, then we're gonna set the X to page X and the Y to page Y. And right now we have everything we need to render our custom context menu, except the actual component. So let's create that really quick. I'm going to create it right here called tutorial context menu.tsx. And I got a little like hotkey to create a very easy TypeScript component that already has the type set. And this component is going to receive two properties for now. 
which is going to be x a number and y also a number. And these properties are going to come from right here. And it does not really matter where you render out your context menu as long as it's somewhere on the page and it can be shown anywhere within the component. So I'm going to do it right here. The position is going to be absolute anyways. So let's render it out. Tutorial context menu. And this component needs two properties, which is the X. And we save that in context menu dot X and the Y property, which is context menu dot Y. All right. And with that, we are pretty much all set. The only thing we want to do, as you can see right now, it always shows and we do not want that to happen. So that is why we're going to conditionally render this one. So context menu dot show if that is true, then and only then we're going to render out this tutorial context menu component. By default, it's false. So you'll see it's not visible at the moment. However, when we do click, then it becomes visible but the layout shifts and it doesn't appear where we clicked. So let's fix that really quick. It's very easy. We can just go inside of the tutorial context menu. And because we have received these two values, we can actually use them to style this div. The top property is going to be a template string and we will render out the Y coordinate in pixels. And the left property is going to be the same thing. We're going to render out the X value we got for this component as the amount we want it shifted in pixels. And really important right now that doesn't really work because the div is not set to an absolute position. We're going to be using tailwind right now to fix that an absolute position. Now that might seem to work at first. It doesn't work though. Why is that? Because in this specific case, it might be different for you. We actually need to increase the Z index to actually show above the content. And then the custom context menu is going to appear right where we click. And we could stop right there and call it a day, right? Because we got a custom menu. You can sell it however you want. I'm going to leave that totally up to you. That's none of my business. Um, we could call it a day right now. But when we left click, it doesn't close. So that is an issue you might wonder how to fix. And that is a very simple thing to fix as well. First off, we're going to pass this tutorial context menu, a method that allows itself to close. So we're going to call that close context menu. And that is going to be of type close context menu. It's going to be a function that re doesn't return anything. So void. And to provide that function. So let's write out that function really quick. Let's call it context menu close. And the only thing that function is going to do is um, set the state, set context menu. And here you can see why I created the initial context menu at the start. Um, it will just reset the whole thing to show false. These values don't really matter, so we can actually set them like that. And then we're going to pass that function to this component like that. Close context menu. There we go. And why is it mad at me? Oh, because we call it uh, differently. There we go. And now in this component, we have access to it. So let's just try it out on click. It's going to be a function that invokes close context menu. Not what we want for later, but right now, if we click this, it should close. And that's exactly what it does. However, we want it to close when we click somewhere else, right? Not when we click the menu. That's kind of pointless. So one thing we can do for that is actually use a hook and I'm going to leave the code for the hook. Uh, it's a custom one in the description, so you don't have to uh, worry about that. It's got, it's called um, use click outside. And what we need to do is pass it a ref. So let's call that the context menu ref. And then the handler, what is going to happen when someone clicks outside. And that is going to be right here, the close context menu action. All right, so let's create the ref for that really quick. Let's call it context menu ref. It's going to be equal to null at the start. And then later it's going to be an HTML div element because this right here is a div element. And so we're going to assign this, the, oops, this ref to this element. And that is pretty much the only thing we need to do. Um, let's take a quick look at the use on click outside function. 
Essentially what it does is it attaches event listeners to the um, document and once your element is clicked, it returns, but when anything else is clicked but the element, so this would be the element, if anything else is clicked on the page besides this ref that we have just defined, then this handler function as the second parameter will run. And in this case, it will just close the context menu. So let's try that out. And it works perfectly. All right, I'm really happy with that. It looks good, it works perfect. I'm going to leave the styling totally up to you, whatever you want to do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I wish you a lot of fun with your new custom context menu. Have a good day and bye bye.